How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone, and I've never met someone who doesn't want to make self-growth normal, then make sure to smash that like button. I feel like I have so much to say about this guy's work, but I only have two of his books. If you've ever heard the words by Dale Carnegie, those three words, you know clear as day, how to win friends and influence people, his groundbreaker. He read hundreds of biographies from Confucius to Churchill. He interviewed many successful people from Henry Ford to Eleanor Roosevelt. And he says that was just the beginning. He also worked for five years in a laboratory, or at least that's what they called it, where they gave students a set of rules on how to uh, stop worrying and had the students apply the rules to their own lives and bring back results of, you know, this is what changed. As a result of this experience, the author, the author presumes that he has listened to more talks on how to conquer worry than anyone on the planet ever. This book is said to be a fast moving documented report from thousands of adults. He says, you won't find anything new in it, but you will find a lot that is not normally applied. So the purpose of this book is to restrict, restrict? Restrict. That, that is a word. Illustrate, streamline, air condition, and glorify ancient truths and get you to apply them. I know that Dale Carnegie died in 1955, but if you gave this dude a book topic that he really believed in, he would persecute it with conscientious treatment. He's like Robert Greene, except he's not as maximal and iconoclastic in terms of breaking down all these different concepts that he presents. There is an in-depth chapter on how worry destroys the human body. If that doesn't build urgency, a great way to stop worrying is, and this sounds a little, I could see why someone would think this is counterintuitive, but I could probably maybe more easily see how it isn't. Start working, get busy. Get busy and stay busy. Have you ever been so busy that you can't worry about anything? That's the type of busy we're talking about. Not so busy that the only thing you can worry about is everything. Because I feel like a lot of people have gotten to that point. I mean, how to be busy is another book topic in a lot of ways that's kind of worth exploring. But he's he's been dead how many? 50, 60-something years? So I don't know. I feel like how to be busy the right way is something is more of a Brian Tracy type of book topic that... Tracy has probably pounded to death. I mean, the secret to being miserable, this is where it really makes sense. The secret to being miserable is having the time to worry about whether you're happy or not. Work is one medicine, but the only medicine that's cheaper than laughter is exercise, which scientists have argued, I heard, it can be more effective than medication. But you should be working and laughing and exercising anyway. I think no human being on the planet at all would not benefit from working and laughing and exercising every day. Sometimes when I get out of my car at work, I will run into the office where people are, people are like, are you all right? Why are you running so fast? No, because I don't know how to do this job as fast as I can run from my car to this office. And that gives me time to overthink my performance and follow up and the quality of the emails I'm writing. What if this person doesn't answer the phone? And what if I say or do the wrong thing when they do answer the phone and I'm in mid conversation and I have no idea what to say. And someone yells at me, stop thinking, start working, start learning. You know what I mean? So it's books like this, they will really get you going. Working on yourself, I would argue, is more important than any work you do any on anything else. And I try not to talk about myself too much in these reviews, but I do think that something that has greatly reduced the intensities of my anxiety and depression, at least more than absolutely anything, it has been working on myself. I like to think our followings are reflections of us. So anyone who sees my videos, I like to think of as someone I can relate to and appreciate very uh, openly. But anyway, Carnegie's tone struck me as that of a sort of fa why, wise fatherly figure whose words are simply not possible to effectively argue against. And that's simply because you hear them and you're like, why would I argue against that? If you have anxiety, this is 
an amazing book to check out. Further in this review, I want to talk about mm, some observations I had deeper into the book. One that comes to mind is that is Dale Carnegie's tendency to present a short background of someone, and he does it in a way that makes the person seem like this visionary who like changed the world. And then he's like, he just gives out some very, some very simple attention catcher. Like, here are five words that completely changed his life. Here is one tip that got him to turn his health around in his early 50s and live to his late 90s. A story about John D. Rockefeller Sr., which I didn't know. Maybe I pretended I didn't, maybe I pretended not to hear it while I was listening to his biography by Ron Cherno, which is amazing, by the way. But Carnegie does these things, and it is an astounding example of creativity and salesmanship and where they kind of blend together. Something else, I don't really think it's like a striking thing, but uh, Napoleon Hill, author of my favorite book, Thinking Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill <laughs> recycles concepts in his books a lot. Like, I could see why anyone would think it's almost annoying. Almost verbatim, in many sentences and instances. Dale Carnegie <laughs> really, I feel like Dale Carnegie tries to avoid this. I'm not entirely sure why I'm comparing them. I think it's because they are authors of more than one, like, top selling self-help book of history, uh, and they were both from last century. There's a chapter about prayer and how, like, faith and religion, and how it's so practical that even a lot of scientists apparently turn to it. Something stands out to me in terms of, like, what entails a uh, quality belief in a spirit. That is the quality of the spirit with which you believe in it. I was listening to this chapter and I really do agree with that. Like, I don't really have that many religious beliefs, but I do have some strong beliefs about religion itself. I think they can be summed up, summed up way more fittingly in the chapter uh, about faith from, from Think and Grow Rich. There are some things in here about how to stop worrying about what others think of you that are just they're gold. I would check the book out just because of those, honestly. And the chapter about sleep and taking quick naps, it's very, very, I would say, uh, convincing, but I don't want to because it's just very strange. The reasoning makes sense, I just don't know if it's outdated. I would say that I checked, but there are far, far newer, very popular books, actually in my wish list that I've yet to listen to that are about sleep and how to how we why we do it and how to optimize its quality and other odds and ends regarding the topic. Overall, wow. I, I can't say I like it as much as how to win friends and influence people, but I also can't say that I've listened to this one over 10 times yet and applied just about everything in it to the point where I have a solid idea of what works for me and what doesn't and to what degree at this time in my life to do that with every one of these books. However, that alone is an infinity game that I am learning to stop worrying about and maybe start living in the form of? I don't know if that made sense. These adults did not come to my classes because they wanted college credits and social prestige. They came for one reason only. They wanted to solve their problems. Science is a collection of successful recipes. Our main business is not to see what lies dimly at a distance, but to do what lies clearly at hand. You are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. I never stand up when I can sit down, and I never sit down when I can lie down. Direction one. Just like how to win friends this influ and influence people, this book has a title that's like, well, if you want to know how to do it, this book's going to teach you how to do it. So if you'd like to know how to stop worrying and start like living your life, this book really does talk about how to do that. And I promise that its contents have not been abused by salespeople to the point where they're no longer as effective as they used to be and have thus added to the negative stigma that people have against us. At least that I know of. Direction two. If you like this book, you might like High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. I was surprised at my recommendation for that, just looking at my library. But the chapter about stress is just 
That is just some very featherweight stuff that we are looking at here. That book, as well as uh, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. That is just, I mean, th that's like this book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, and The Power of Now. Anyone with depression and anxiety, just check out those two books and do it a billion times. I don't think that you're gonna, you're gonna have like, I don't really know if you'll have it anymore. How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. There's a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video, if you wanna check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it, but hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because. I don't get why people watch this for one of my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.